forward. Okay. Um, and then I'm, I have the code, you know, marked up like line by line. I'm ready to, you know, go. I, I, like I just sort of said, like I have, that's why I encouraged us to talk to people that are here because a lot of mine are just in the margins, rationale, question mark, like why this? Um, Done. What, 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 how did you see this working? Well, I, I, uh, I could have done something to hear your thoughts. Okay. All right. So I, I, I was thinking let's try to get a couple of early wins to generate momentum. So number one, from the existing code with some additions. Tim, could I ask you to speak up? I have an ear infection, and it's really hard for me to hear. So come right up. Sure. You're the chair. Move, move up if you uh, Come on down. Fine. Everyone's That's well, so kind of close. Go. So the first thing, um, number one, is purpose. Um, I thought the the additions to this paragraph were useful. Okay, we're going right to the red line. Yes. Okay. So I thought the additions to to this first section were useful. The the only addition that I would make is in the last sentence where it says transit use and the creation of streetscape. I would just want to include the word public transit use. I had the same exact thing there. Um, also, like a, a big change for this zoning is the use of uh, principal permitted uses, so that's number two. I'm, I'm very comfortable with that, um, but I did not see, and I may have missed it, where is the, uh, the use schedule? Well, there isn't a use schedule yet, because at the moment it's embedded in the text, as are many zoning ordinances, so um, it's kind of telling you what's allowed and what's not allowed. Um, our, our current zoning ordinance is kind of an old school zoning ordinance, so I mean it's really kind of very dated and newer ordinances um, don't have quite that set up with all those uses. in Like flower shop, funeral yes. home. Yes. Know, right? Golf car repair them. shop, right? No. Yeah. They have a much simpler use case. Yes, because I, I think when you get into that granularity, it's, it's right. Really and, it, and actually, one of the things that people brought up is like, why aren't there any banks? Yes. There are no banks allowed now. Mm -hmm. Because in the current zoning, th this is so complicated to figure out because in the current zoning, um, it says you can't do anything that isn't listed here. So, for example, banks aren't listed here. So by definition, you can't have a bank. So you can't have a bank in New Falls? No, in the NBR side. In the NBR. Retail right, business but, but to service, but, not otherwise. But, but everything was by SUP, so you could have a bank if it was permitted by the Through bank. that process. Right. Well, the reason I'll get to that later, but um, drive-through things are not a good idea in this zone because it's just going to increase traffic. Well, I don't have a right, but I don't want to. I don't want to get into okay. um, but I'm the just prohibited saying, uses this, just this, yet. I'm this is like a very old-fashioned way to do that. So back up. Yeah. We need to apply the. There's no stupid question rules, please. Um, so when you say use schedule, because uh, you know zoning for dummies, because I don't, you know. Um, that's like, from what I'm hearing you say, is that once this is done, you then cull a list that becomes a separate reference that, that puts it all in one Correct. place, and that's what the use schedule would be. Okay. I don't I know just what you mean. Make... You cull a list, so what ends up on that list? I guess that's what I'm trying to get clarity on. Yeah, you have to, you have to work out a use schedule, but that was premature. This is a, a suggestion. <coughs> so once we get to to the adjustments we're making now, then we can have something that's much more succinct and fits on one page. Because most zoning ordinances in Ulster County and Dutchess County have a use schedule that fits on one page. It's not like this. Was there not a uh, list of uses in the B3? I've never seen some list. There used to be. Yeah, so we can always use that as a yeah. starting point. 
and, and modify I it. have copies of the current zoning in case you're interested in the current use schedule. Well, I don't think we want to get into that now. I'm just saying right, that's something we can use saying, as a starting point. We need to do something better than that. I also just realized we missed something in my notes because we dove right in and I just want to make sure that the board thanks the committee for all your work and Joe for chairing the committee. Um, it's a lot of information. I've literally read these documents like so many times and every time I find another little piece of the puzzle and you know I'm a, to my I'm a vein on the leaves <laughs> on the trees in the forest kind of gal so yeah. I want to make sure we leave no part of the term and Thank it's obvious the that there's been a lot of attention, and here we are sitting at one table trying to get from you all what you've been focusing on once right. a week for many months now. So mm -hmm. it's really, I guess I'm going to ask for a little yeah. bit of like patience while we get yeah. through this because we have a lot of getting I to speed. I totally understand, and this is zoning is really tricky. It's tricky to understand. It's tricky to administer it totally is and, yeah. and the devil is in the details yes but and another thing i had in my notes is um i wasn't really sure how this that this was going to happen and i'm really glad that you just went straight to the code like the narrative was very helpful but redlining the code what it actually looks like is definitely like mm -hmm. Very, very good. I didn't want to be at this point in a conceptual conversation about a narrative. Like, what is that actually going to look like? So, having so, thanks to everyone who contributed to marking up the code and taking your conceptual to the, the actual, you know, nuts and bolts. And really, there, there aren't that many, you know, a lot of this is similar to what we had before. Sometimes it's in red because. We rewrote the previous code to make it clear, but we didn't necessarily change the substance. Okay, okay so I want to skip over um, section 2.5, that's the primary uses for now. Don't so is everybody going to go through, like, or shouldn't we all together chime in each? Uh, uh, understanding how we're doing this. You're going to go through all, it just seems like while we're at each point, we should all say what we have to say, if anything. Well, I think three, eight, three or five people were at most of the meetings. So right. we'll, this kind of is the work process that we, we, right. we created and, and voted for along the way. Okay. Um, what I was trying to do was to identify the things that we could say, okay, these are good, so we okay, don't so have you're to still review on that. Okay. That's, I, I okay. haven't gotten off of that. I okay. to continue that. <laughs> and actually, three of the people at this table were, you know, in the weeds for a lot of this yeah, process. Yeah, yeah, Good point. Bill escaped. But, uh, now <laughs> I don't know how that's... <laughs> I see it right there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Head to number 10, section 10, which is sorry, which is the streetscape standards. You know that that seems pretty straightforward. Um, the only thing identified there, like so, that's something that I'm very comfortable with. The only thing identified there is I think there's a typo where it should be dis, uh, and this, the second to last line, which should be should be designed depending on whether. Where are you? Second to last line under uh, number 10, streetscape standards. In this district should be designed depending on whether or not. I'm not quite sure where you are. Second to last no, line. Page, 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 page three. Page three. Middle of the second to last line. Oh, I'm on the wrong side. <laughs> <laughs> That'll do it. Yeah, I wasn't trying to focus on adjusting that word as much as section 10 I'm, I'm good yeah. with, is, if, I, if everyone else is good with number 10. Uh, How the street shape should be designed, exactly. Yeah, I'll see, I went through this many, many times, but there's always something. So that's, that's a section that's that's very easy for me to, uh, to agree with. Could I just explain that, that this, this diagram um, has like two options for whether or not you have a bike lane um, which has a buffered parking lane that's on the left hand side. If you don't have that option because you don't have enough space, you have a travel lane, a striped um, area to protect the bicyclists and then the bike lane. So it's kind of a, 
combination diagram so it shows you. Two you can do options. one or the other, yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 One of the challenges with the streetscape is uh, that Trip 13 bridge right by Stewart's is so narrow. Kind of uh, part of why we were looking at two different zones with a miniature cutoff right there. Okay. Okay. If I may well, throw something in there. When we start referring to studies and documentation such as complete streets, for the public and others who haven't been intimately involved with the process, maybe there should be some sort of reference to this because we'll be making this as a public document. What complete streets is. Just do a hyperlink to a link to a, a site, right. official site. And it's also true of throughout, well, some, throughout some, the, of, some of that. Some of that was in the view that this. Code. Some of that was in this. That's correct. But, mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess even the code would have to follow. For way. example, all the bike lanes stuff, mm -hmm. which is really sort of what <laughs> we're talking about. The complete streets. That's um, the net. Oh, well, it doesn't have to be in the code. Thank you. This is the net. Yeah. Here at Federal Bird, we can get to a Yeah. It would be useful. Okay. Or just say, can street, or complete streets policy authored by you know, this organization or that organization, just so there's a reference you know, and, mm -hmm. and a date of their document. Uh, it's your we can't be the first. I mean, uh, complete uh, streets has been around. I wonder how you embed that kind of information in the code. We could. Uh, I don't think you put it in a zoning code. Yeah, right? it doesn't. See, you know, you don't put hyperlinks in a code, right? But if we had some documentation, you know, on the page. Well, usually it's a footnote. We can add that to this. Yeah, put it in the footnote. Right. Okay. That's where that should go. Thank you. Good idea, Bill. Okay, another one that I thought was pretty straightforward was the, um, and I guess this is not in this section of the code, but it was in the recommendations part, um, the idea of uh, parcels that are north of Bonnacue View Road on, um, on, on 32. Those few residential properties, like remove them from the NBR, just make them residential in our east line, on the eastern portion, the east side. above so, Bonacue View. Just that, that little weird triangle. Yeah, there are only half lots anyway, they're like yep. pieces of There's lots. some that are in the town, it's weird. <coughs> well, some of the lots are half in the town, not in the village. Mm -hmm. So, um, like the parking lot of the church. Yeah, it's, it's weird. Really odd. Right, so the, the NBR would stop, or, or whatever we're discussing here um, would, would stop at Bonacu you were on the east side. So it seems like everyone's comfortable with that idea. Um, and there are three residential properties in the Y that is between um, the road by Oast East and the 32. Where Old Kingston comes out to 32. Yeah, right. So, thank you, Dennis. That's great. This piece, these are, there are three residential properties here that are not on water and sewer. And those also should go back to other one. The, but those are all on the east side north, of 32? They're on the west side. So well, those they're, are north of they're on the west side of 32. I can't see. They're in this little Y here. <coughs> it's the difference between Old Kingston and 32. So this is what you were talking about, correct? So, yeah. That's what you were talking about. Yes. Right? So they're saying this as well? Yeah. It, I mean, the, the, there's no water in sewer. There are three residences there. And it just doesn't seem wise. This to, is 32? This is 32. Okay. I just want to make sure. So there are three properties that are North of Boxes mm -hmm. on 32, mm -hmm. on the west side. Mm -hmm. We talked about hydroponic show. Right. Not, not that I far. I don't think it's that far. far. But yeah. two houses. Yeah. There's a house that always has a DEC truck yeah. parked in the driveway. Exactly. Yep. 
There's one. Small town limit. Those three, those, um, that little piece there is 4.47 acres. It should go back to our one. So that's just a map adjustment. Yeah, I'm, I'm I didn't catch that when I read this. Is that in here or is this something? No, that's in, no it's in the it's recommendations. In the, um, okay. So again, I'm, I'm just trying to okay. identify the yep. easy yes. of course it <coughs> um, So now, um, slightly more difficult. That's a scale. So in 16... Can we go back to, if you don't mind? Yeah. Can you go to the 11 building design standards? Yeah. Yeah. You have, in the second paragraph, state or the first paragraph, state, rural in nature. And I think rural in nature, I think of silos, grain silos. Is there something else we could put in that? What is that? Call it? Rural. Rural. We borrowed that from Lloyd. So Lloyd thinks it's rural. Um, the building should be. Which one? That's eleven. What? Eleven. The second the graph. Intro, totally. The preamble. Well, you could just say new buildings should be similar to existing buildings. That would be fine. Yeah, the rural in character. What? The words rural in character. Are really yeah. Bad. So take out. Uh, similar to the existing buildings. Should be similar. So take out be rural in character. And then I was suggesting seven, just below that C, you have stylistic features, I would substitute that for architectural features. Excellent, yep. That's more precise. So who's, who's actually scribing? Yeah, it's just, it's just a question. I've been writing everything down. I don't know. And I'm tr I've been putting people's initials by what they say, so. I'm putting the same thing. Okay, so maybe we could so do it annotated together. <clears throat> so if we're still within 11 building design standards for number six. By the way, this comes right out of the comprehensive plan. This is stuff. Um, so for number six, I would prefer that it said instead of. In general, natural materials. I would prefer that it said uh, materials. Um, well, let me explain about why this says this, and that is because this is right out of the comprehensive plan. I understand. But we're still allowed to. You know, yeah, that's okay. not a sacred document. Okay. I think what we're trying to do is make it a current document. What is your suggestion? My my suggestion is. Um, like, I'm not opposed to th these different types of materials. I think the concern is that we don't want an aesthetic that appears synthetic. Right. So I would prefer, you know, something that is encouraging a certain type of aesthetic as opposed to um, mandating natural materials. Perhaps the look of natural materials or the appearance of natural appearance? You know, that way if there is some other material that can replicate that, it would still work. I don't know. I'm, I'm actually, like, I think there's some cool things you can do reusing concrete and metal. And, you know, I think that um, pushing natural versus artificial industrial, be, it's a little too limiting to me. I think it's kind of old school. How old is our comprehensive plan? <laughs> Um, well, I think the issue is trying, I understand trying to make the it, intent. It's trying to be easy for the people on the planning board to administer right. this. If you just say, in general, they should be natu you know, pure natural, you know, whatever it might be. It's, it's still By sufficient. the way, it just says, yeah, that's still super subjective. Well, yeah, so yeah. I would really like to ask that the planning board to be in the Yeah, I think Joe's pointing out something. It does say preferred. Yeah, it says in general, preferred. So at least there is preferred a Preferred definitely there. helps. Although, I'm not sure. Since we're on this, I don't want to detract you from that. I mean, I, I'm still sort of wrestling um, with the design standards in general. 
um, I'm supportive of design standards, but I don't want them to go so far as to make things look cookie cutter. So right there's that sweet spot in between the two, where our, our eclectic identity can still shine, but we make sure that we're less shabby in our shining. <laughs> Being but but I think in general we definitely need design standards. I've heard yeah, and I'm not. I've, yeah, yeah, I'm that not. Is what our, that yes. is what our. I mean, one of my general pros was was the the um, that I'm glad we identified the lack of specificity that then became a problem at the planning board with things like everything being special use and things mm -hmm. like not having design standards. So. Right. I'm, I'm do totally in support of that. I just want to make sure the design standards that we use provide direction, but not are not too directive. So I'm still sort of. Do you want to send the to the planning board for their comment? Well, Michael was the planning board rep. Too, too complicated, you know. Yeah. yeah. It might be nice to get the entire, you know, to send the whole thing to the planning board for comment. Well, it's too much. I, yeah. I think we do, but we need to. Yeah. I mean, but do you want to chime in, Michael? You're here. No, you yeah. can. Send it to us. Okay. I kind of think this is for this. This number six is for the planning geeks. I, uh, I, could I just suggest in six that we just drop the word natural and just say materials? Sure. Okay. I can live with that. Anything else before we go on to another topic? From in, in number 11, building the line standards. Because you did, you did um, bring up that idea, KT, about reused materials, right? So, you know that that could be an interesting way to construct a green building where you know we're reusing um, galvanized metal or tinted glass or vinyl in a way that that is aesthetically pleasing. I don't think there's anything automatically bad about those materials if they're used you know, differently. That's all you know I was thinking of in terms of like the, the, the idea of design standards, you know, we want it to be a guide. We don't want it to be right. you know, too rigid. Are we moving off that page or Sure, you have something else there. But just down in G, we're almost repeating. This is now, uh, if you go down to page six, as I have it, G is almost a repeat what we have in this thing in the number six one we were just mm -hmm. talking about. Yeah. Yeah, I would agree. And that, that's where I thought it should say something like the exterior finished materials on all facades should be encouraged as opposed to limited to, you know, because this one is even more rigid. Yeah, I had, I had should be limited, crossed out, and put encouraged. Yeah. Since we already have material in number six, why don't we just limit G? Well, it says for buildings and signage, and then this specifically talks about exterior finish. Is that a distinction without a difference, or you could always add a difference the, without Add the word exteriors to uh, to number six. Uh, buildings, building exteriors it's, and such. Sort of I thought buildings stuff. implies exteriors. Right? Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I'm, I'm good with eliminating. Yeah, let's do yes. it. You want to eliminate G? Yeah, it's already covered in number six. And, and, a bit and if we could go to D, just briefly, word, the, in terms of the height of the parapets, where is that coming from? 42 inches, etc. That's coming from the comprehensive plan. That's a 42 inch, that's almost a 42 Well, maybe, no, maybe that came from Lloyd. Um, I think I might have come. Can we, since we probably won't have the answer tonight, could you find out why that's, that's the number, 42? Because um, yeah. I've seen thinner parapets that would brick, you know, or tall ones that came up. Maybe it's to stop little children falling off. I, I don't know. Or big children. It should be a big children. <laughs> it's college time. Yeah. Stuff happens. Um, I'll try and so, find out where that came from and why. Why it's for me. The building code. Uh, uh. <clears throat> this 
specifically 542 in general. Yeah, lines in the third, for example. Okay, um, the, the next item that may be a little bit more difficult, and this wasn't even a recommendation, but as we're reviewing this concept of uh, number 16, off-street parking, and B, it says the planning board may at its sole discretion approve the joint use of a parking facility and allow a reduction in the parking okay, requirements. Okay, slow down. Uh, we got to wait for us to get to order one. So your page B, 8? 16B. Okay. First sentence, where it just says allow a reduction in the parking requirements of up to 30% for two or more principal buildings or uses. So <coughs> I, I would be comfortable with the idea of giving the planning board discretion to allow uh, a building to have its off street parking. At a much higher percent somewhere else than 30. Yeah, I had much higher in the law. column. It's 16B. the top of page nine. It's too hard to find the number. I'll start with page nine. Please. Okay. So this is something that's not red line. This is it's not red line. It's all. It's just yeah. Why were you? It's like the same. Oh, that that's the original NBR. Right. <coughs> Think, you know, we have regular conversations about how parking is achieved in this community. Um, it might make sense to give the planning board the ability to say, okay, well, this this apartment building, its parking is you know nearby. Okay, well, that, that's what the shared parking diagram is. Maybe useful for instead of that percentage. I'm going to need you to walk me through this diagram. I would it love needs to walk some the shared, the shared parking diagram has to do with on site parking. I'm talking about off site parking. Well, shared parking is if you have two could be both right? places near I mean, next to each other. It's by default off site. Though they could have a shared parking arrangement so that um, I have a specific example here. So, suppose we have two adjacent properties. One is residential, one is an office use. So, the office use needs 12 spaces and the residential one needs 10 based on the other criteria. So, between the two of them, they need 22 spaces. But, if you look at the parking diagram, and you look what happens when you intersect residential with office, there's a ratio of 1.4. So you divide 22 by 1.4, and you come up with 16. And I could put that in the... Put in the yeah, yeah, I, I fully understand means, that. That's, yeah, I that's, it's a little different it. than I didn't even what see I'm the decimal points there. It's I'm, okay. I'm just talking about 16B, and this <coughs> sentence, and this may or may not be a shared situation. I'm talking about like, like with septic systems that are next to a sensitive water body. I think that's what we want to we want to, we want to move get, that get away from that. Yeah. I think the thing one of the things we were concerned about in the overall idea, and I think why we came up with the recommendation that we did is Almost, we were concerned that the existing landowners, we were trying to give them something other than just putting them on hold until the water and sewer was in place to expand the multi-use district. They could at least they would have some uses that they could invest in their property and blah blah blah. And going back to that was the idea with going back to the B three, at least. You know, for right now, you can still do this. But then I fear that you're stuck with this well, forever. Yeah, yeah it's we're, sort of a we're, we're the trying not to encourage them to invest a lot of money in properties that we really don't want to see that be the 
long-term use for. So it's really, it's, it's trying to be fair to the landowners while still getting what you want in the long term. And it's, it's, it's a hard it's, I don't get how that's putting decision. them less on hold. I feel like that's putting it more on hold. Well, because they can get existing, the existing uses. See, right now, the existing uses, a lot of them are non-conforming. So they're very limited to any improvements they would want to make to their property because they're not conforming. And they can't do any new building. What if they're not conforming with what? With the 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 yard. Right. So, so if you have so like, any new building, like, they can't do any new building. Right. So if you have if you have the, the houses that that is mm -hmm. you know, south of of Yon's, yeah, yeah, and that was before the planning board. If we go back to B three, then we're going to be stuck with whatever is allowed in B three. Yes. And we're going to be stuck with a private septic right next to Troop Thirteen. Well, the, the problem with that is if you're, you can't just deny them, well, you could just call out the department. But you can't really just deny properties existing. No, you're not denying it. You know, so the way, you know, market, the way the market would respond is you don't that the, the, property. the property's value would, would then go down. Right. But then that might be a, a worthwhile investment for someone who who has a long-term view that says in 5, 10, 15 True. years, the infrastructure True. will eventually come to this area. True. Oh, well, those, those parcels are really very limited as to what you could do. I don't remember who made the point, the point, but I remember the point being made at the meeting when this was discussed. You know, why create a zone in, say, 2017 that assumes water and sewer, kind of requires water and sewer, but it might be 20 years before that actually comes to pass. So in you know if, if in a scenario where it took 20 years to get that water and sewer there, we we'd be putting this this area town in kind of limbo, where you know and I guess so it is it's a judgment call. I don't think there's any clear right or wrong. I think that was part of the thinking that led to the decision to to split it into two zones. But I think if you continue with the path that you're on, then you're just guaranteeing that it will never change. Yeah, I kind of feel like you don't have that possibility for an investor then saying, you know, they look at that, they want to do a multi-use thing, they're not going to invest in that property if the village has not indicated that um, those uses are allowed, right? So you, then you don't have that opportunity for saying, for getting a developer, as you described, to help pay for those infrastructure costs. What do you think, Michael? I don't think any can have a question. <laughs> um, what's the what what do you all see as the possible timetable for doing an infrastructure plan and raising the money to actually put the infrastructure in? So I mean like you can probably answers. say this better. Like yeah. I when I read this I was like, wow, there's we need to get people up to date on what we know already. Now, I wouldn't be so bold to say that we have a full plan, but we already have, as Tim has indicated, this project is on that priority list. The big um, EFC, is that the right acronym for it, that we didn't get, it literally didn't make the cut on that one. So it, you know, if we had gotten those five projects funded this year, we would have gotten the money for that next year. So this is completely on our radar. Like we know, we, but that's just irrespective for, but of that's what just we decide. For but, but even and is that just is that at the same capacity or is that advanced? Yeah, okay, so two so things. So can yeah. I just finish my one thought? Which is basically we have a lot of pieces of the puzzle. We just need to put them in one place so everybody can see that it looks cohesive and add what we need. So go ahead. So the, the EFC application was strictly for drinking water. Um, there is a pump station and my market. We have four pump stations in the village of New Mills. Three of them are all long in the tooth and should be replaced. Um, they cost us a lot of money to maintain because we're just throwing good money at, at bad old family pump stations. My market is one of them. My market should have been replaced when, when Woodland Hot was developed. Absolutely. And it wasn't. It was, it was sent in the other direction. Um, so even if there is no additional capacity constructed on 32, that pump station is going to fail in the near term. Mm -hmm. So when it fails, we should simultaneously update the sewer conveyance system on the street, which is, yeah. you know, it's a few hundred thousand dollars to repair the pump station, and, you know, all in, it's probably a million dollars to then have 
sewer conveyance that could, could handle. handle an updated pump station with so that you then have all the properties along that corridor with access to the sewer. So to answer your question, mm -hmm. I don't know, six and a half years from now, within that, that time frame? If we're relying on grants. Yeah, I mean, there are bonds, you can bond, right? If, right, CDBG funding doesn't go away, you know, we just saw we would yeah. get another, yeah. another year's worth of that. But you know, we have our list of prioritized water projects, our list of prioritized sewer projects, and that pump station on my market is you know, one of the more important pump stations. There are other ways that are handled in some cases, and you know, an, an additional improvement district, meaning you're taxing the properties that would be affected. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, for the improvements, I mean that's that's one of the ways it's done. If, if they're the ones who are going to benefit by being able to go to multi-story, then they're the ones who pay the cost to upgrade the pump station. Now, of course, it's not it's, it's not apples to apples because the pump station is bad. So it's really yeah. it's the difference, and then the village has to fund you know the, the actual apples to apples. So that's one way to look at. It gain some of that funding if you, if you want to. There's a lot of different ways, but you know, you're going to have to, again, I, I would think six and a half is, you're very optimistic. I mean, I, I'm just, yeah. Um, I'm just not sure what placeholder zoning for that area north of Trip really gets us. I feel like well, if anything, it, it potentially okay. hurts us. Why don't you, did you think about discussing with your village attorney as you lend Yeah, I, I did discuss it with him, and, and he what said you could do it. You know, he said there's yeah, no he's, magic he's bullet. Just, there's no magic yeah, bullet. He's just telling you. Um, okay. It did seem like he was leaning towards, you know, you're making this effort to update the zoning. You know, do it now, and then the property values would reflect the fact that there isn't the infrastructure. If the project goes before the planning board, the planning board is aware that there isn't the infrastructure. So the property values would be re re reflective. But then at some point in the future, you know, we have, we have a, a, an impetus here in that it's not just that there's no infrastructure there. There's actually it, infrastructure there that's failing, that actually, and that's why I'm saying six and a half years as opposed to yeah. 20. Because that pump station at my market will go. Will go. Mm -hmm. And are we just going to invest in a Band-Aid? Or are we going to do it right and, and redo the whole conveyance system for that corridor? So then the idea is to try and get the streetscape improvements on the same time frame. Right. So we, we can sleep on that a little bit more about north versus south. Only reason um, that we discussed the B3 as a placeholder is the B3 stuff is still in the zone, still in the use tables, it's still you know, an artifact, but in terms of efficiency, that would really be, a, it's a temporary solution, but at least people could do something with their property rather than being on hold until the infrastructure is there. And again, but this you're is not expecting a lot of turnover in those uses. You're expecting maybe some maintenance and maybe some slight expansion. No, but this is what concerns me about that, though, is if you use the B3 as a placeholder, then you just end up with, you know, someone buys those houses on the cheap and they just continue to just be like low quality income properties. Yeah, no, you're, you're right. It's a step backwards, that's why yeah. I'm not no, comfortable right. on it. It's not a step backwards, it's status quo. No, no it, it actually is a step backwards because if if a new owner, like if, if a new owner buys and they're like, oh, I love this cheap income property, I'm gonna just keep it as this cheap income property. So you, you really have, 
it, it just ends up well, being it, stuck it is, in that. I mean, it's, this is a circular argument after a while. Right, it is. It's the chicken yeah. or the egg thing. And and my concern is the step backward and that you don't open opportunities. Obviously, so, a project's not going to make it through the planning board if so it lacks the that infrastructure kind of, uh, needs. Confusing for applicants. So, so you're sort of covered against that happening because the planning board is, you're not sort of, you are, the planning board's right. not going to let it happen. Well, one of the things that we discussed, and, and Michael um, can speak to this too, is that maybe there need to be some other uses that we could uh, put into that northern zone that might be appropriate. Like at the moment, um, you know, there, there could be sort of job opportunities even, sort of, right? Michael, what was the thinking on that? The northern part? Why? But ultimately, given the differences in the size of the parcels, that when the zoning was updated, that you might also consider a, a broader spectrum of possible uses with the idea that you might want to establish some, you know, sort of, we had talked about, for example, sort of incubator places where startup businesses could could operate there and you wouldn't necessarily require them to be mixed use if it was appropriate and with the idea that you would are creating the whole area where you've got residents and then you have businesses up the street where people might actually work and so they're a couple blocks from where they actually work. Uh, but that's to me at least my thinking was that was sort of separate from the, the so this dilemma of how to handle this transition. I just want to make sure I hear your so you so basically we're restricting in the south end to mixed use and you're saying you're making a case that on the northern end we sh we should allow for multi use but not restrict it to multi use that there's possibilities for yeah using the example of a large employer coming in and just being a large employer building is that yeah. what you're saying yeah and I and I'm saying that we should investigate that we should rule that out again part of that I think might better understood if we look at the actual sort of build out of what's possible in that in this whole area and like how dense can it reasonably be that will also help inform the sort of the infrastructure capacity needs. Um, but I yeah I thought the idea was my thinking was the idea was that you could create a mixture of kinds of uses so that um, it would facilitate both the new neighborhood, but also neighborhoods around it. And since it's on public transit, then you know it might encourage people to be working in places where they don't necessarily have to drive their cars to, and so forth. So, yeah. So I thought that kind of flexibility might be valuable, but it's perhaps part of a bigger vision. Well, I think so. the sense of the committee was that when you look at the size of the lots and configuration of the lots, north and south of Strip 13. They are pretty much two different, two different, two different zones. You can do different things. I think there's a lot of space restrictions south of Trips 13 that don't exist north. So I guess the feeling was they are not organically the same in character. So I think that's why the, the committee said, and there's no infrastructure there, so let's put that to the side until we do have the infrastructure and can have that. Again, I don't think it was to be a major component of the zone. I think also we were looking at that there will be a spot down 32, not exactly sure where it may be. It may be opposite my market where it doesn't make sense to have on street parking anymore because you're getting out of really that village setting, you're getting into the speed change. You, know, you need to have clear signals there. So some of those parcels down there are large enough that they might be of a different nature where they're not on-street parking storefront. They're more yeah, But that, that, again, that feels like chicken or the egg. Like if you're, if you're encouraging uh, multi-story mixed use with buildings closer to the street, then it would make sense to have on-street parking. Yes, and, but there's but a point. But not if they're developed like. But there's a point, again, that's where this NDR zone really it's longer than you think, and it, it's got more difference to it than you think. And in some areas, you know, we don't have, you only have the one side of the street possible because you've got drainage on the other side, like between um, Wapaku and uh, Sunset Ridge. 
uh, there's drainage on that other side. So our streetscape is already having problems there. And then on the, the near side, again, you are starting to get that speed change from 40 to 30, uh, just beyond the Agway. At least that's, I always know because the cops are. <laughs> um, you need clear signals on that change of speed and, and really to let people know that they're now in, they're not on the rural highway anymore. They're, on a, they're in a village setting and they need to slow down. And, and some of that is where the on-street parking starts. So beyond that point, you could have a different kind of streetscape. And that's what we discuss in our recommendations is really the two types of parcel types. Layouts. One being the zero front setback storefront on-street parking. So where, where would you have your last parcel that would have Buildings close to the street. I take this, yeah. the on street parking currently to my market. So then Agway would not be included or would be included? <coughs> That's somewhere in there. Probably include that whole parcel because if I would have wanted to buy a parcel in the middle, I would probably say the length of Agway. So you're saying it's it's more than just north south that actually north has a division within it as well yeah. as to where you would have sort of a gradual sort of entrance to the village the <coughs> so that the, the storefronts would would come closer to the road as you got closer to where like gateway is now. But north of that you could have parking that was not on the street but actually on the lot. And that's what we discuss in the recommendations is, again, more thinking for the, the northern section of what we're actually setting the zoning for that. And that's one of my reasons why also we're kind of pushing that off a little bit. And maybe saying, let's go back to B3, let's do a little more thinking on this. We might change it a little bit. You know, we like the 30-foot setback from the screen on um, that section. Um, and then these two different types of parcels. I mean, I do think you have to look at that going in a second and it changes a lot. Yeah, and I think that the fact that that car wash is there, I bet you that's not going to be reimagined anytime soon. They just put a lot of money into that. Yeah. Yeah, I you mean, know, I, I believe I, you. Uh, I, light I, out on the rail trail, you can walk by there at night, there's no problem. <laughs> I'm not adverse to thinking, I think there's obviously you can just look at the lot sizes and thinking about things differently, you know. I'm not against thinking about the north side differently, I guess I'm more concerned about going back to the 3 as the solution for now and I need to think a little bit more, I guess, about that part of it. Those are those can be separated out. Yes, well, we can think about it differently, it's but what do we do with it now? Is you have an MUR multi story that you can't build, that you can't hook up to stores. That would be three, you know, so it's kind of, kind of one of them. Right. It's just the one out of the Okay, so I want to uh, talk about another one that I think is, it's, just, it's actually a question. So in 8C side yard, there was this addition of a stub connection to access future parking in adjacent lots is required. Um, is that something that we want to require or encourage? I crossed out required and wrote encouraged. Well, it means you have less um, curb cuts, you know, because you can encourage sort of, you know, between lots. Mm -hmm. Think of, uh, you know, between Burger King and um, the plaza there. You don't have to go back onto the street, which is great because mm -hmm. you know, yeah in the town there's an act that there there's a there's a law that yeah. encourages that type of development right so, I think it I just I'm just wondering I, 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 I like the concept generally I'm just asking about requiring that for each parcel because it's at the discretion of the planning board I think it's appropriate for some it may not be yeah. appropriate that's all oh. that's all I'm thinking yeah. so does it encourage Cover that, See, or do you encourage, want to... I think Michael's going to tell you encourage doesn't help the planning board enough. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to like all my encourages. The possible language to consider is that it 
shall be required, um, and then some language that makes it possible if there are reasons why it isn't feasible to do it. I'm fine with that. So, what do you guys think? I, so I think that sort of catch-all you guys put at the end already for everything, right? <laughs> but under waivers? Well, no, I wouldn't. Or is that too, that's no, not a big thing? Right. Right. If you make okay. an exception for one lot, you don't have to make the same exception for another yeah, lot. Not, right. It's not it's a waiver. Okay. Okay. So. Is required to have a special permit or special approval by the planning board? I just wrote, shall be required unless there are circumstances. Yeah, I mean, the, let the lawyers figure out. Yeah. They're, they're comfortable putting that kind of language okay. together. Okay, so that was it as far as the easier ones. <laughs> um, so I think the next, the, the, the trickier ones are really like height and parking. So we want to talk about either one of those first. I'll flip a coin. Let's go with height. Height, height to each other. Levity. Uh, cool. So we're doing height first? Okay. So the suggestion is 35 feet or three stories. Um, numbers are there? Yeah. We're oh, sorry. Six eighty-two on page two. Okay. Well, just to frame the issue um, in the meetings of the committee, and I think at the at the public Q and A session where there were. Joe, you remember 75, 80 people there at the call? More, more than 70. I think the one point on this whole topic and this whole, uh, this whole zone that met with almost universal consensus uh, was that uh, the people who at least spoke out and, and formed the committee uh, were very much in favor of three-story buildings and, uh, and height restriction that uh, is reflected in the finished product. So it, it's not something that um, grew out of the six or seven people who were present at a given meeting. Uh, I think there was consensus at the table also. But when we looked out to the public and did the public outreach thing, I think people were really struck by how much unanimity, which is hard for me to say, there was on that point. So it seemed to be a really uh, it's surprising to me. It's a really Katie, what do you think? think? I support four stories. That's not new information. <laughs> um, I think we need to build up, and uh, I think we saw with zero place that you know this whole. Um, it's 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 we know this right. We know that we need to do density and infill in our floors to protect our open spaces, but you know. We've learned a hard lesson when the rubber hits the road, when you actually have a project, is when stuff gets real, right? And um, there's lots of people in our community who think that three stories is, should be the max, and there's lots of people who think that four stories should be the max. Um, we have to be really careful when we characterize, you know, universally felt, you know, um, we, we tend to gravitate towards like-minded people. I could riff on the sociology of this, but the point is, you know, um, I, I, you know, there's 200 people who signed a petition in support of Zero Place, and it's it's four stories. So those people are representative people of that thought. Those people in support of four stories? Do they sign a petition in support of a project that's being pitched as an environmentally sensitive product? Right. right. Well, I don't and think you, I don't think you can parse that out. Do you know, I don't notice? think really people um, were paying attention to this four-story thing, except, you know, sort of interested group, group of citizens. I think when that building goes up and people see what it looks like, there's going to be, like, a lot of reaction. Yeah. Oh, well, we'll see. We'll see. Right? I mean, I, I actually, I'm only one vote at this table, and okay. I don't think so, everybody agrees with me at this just, table, so I don't think yeah. we should sort of go crazy hashing it out. But There's enough people at this table who say, hey, yeah, I agree with you, KT, four stories. Okay. I'm not going to 
argue. I thought it was very clearly to us that it was it was stated as a community character issue. It was stated as if this is the difference between Blue Halt, Kingston, yeah. and Poughkeepsie, and Newark. I want to hear from Dennis and Bill. Well, I'd like to just read straight from the Behan Planning and Designing Report that came out of that meeting, where at least 50% of the group agreed on uh, multiple answers. The very first thing that they have listed is three stories should be the maximum, absolutely no four-story buildings. I understand the need to build out, but I also understand the need to do it carefully because everything we build is going to come with cars. Cars need parking, cars create traffic. You get off the freeway at 5 o'clock on a Friday, you are stuck for a long time. How many cars does our community have the ability to have? Our infrastructure is more than just sewer or water, it's also our roads that only have a certain uh, the maximum number of cars that they can accommodate. Parking and traffic are the two common themes that we hear constantly. So I think they, you know, and when we talk about four stories, we talk about the parking, it's all intertwined. Four stories with parking that's uh, not a stretch is a little bit more doable in my mind. Four stories at half a minute, absolutely not. So that's where I am. Yeah. Well, I initially was you know, more than going to camp with three stories, and we've had this conversation before. And, and in terms of the presentation that we did, the workshop that we did with the community of 70, 80 people that attended, um, one of the things that's very easy to, to show is four stories and three stories, which do you prefer? And I think anyone would say three stories. But there are consequences to making that choice. And I don't think the consequences were explained to the group present. The consequences are potential sprawl, building out into the community. And thinking about this, thinking about this, um, we talked about maybe doing a build out trying to determine how many mm -hmm. how many additional you know, apartments could be put, put there, how many people would be put there. It would increase the density in, in potentially decrease any kind of outward spread. So, you know, I, I don't really accept fully the determination that there was a universal determination that three stories is best because it was only showing a very limited, <coughs> limited um, example. Okay, could I just also address the fact that this is a village. This is not a city. Sure. So, if you look at all of the villages in, say, Dutchess County, which is kind of like us looking into the future, because Dutchess County is more developed than we are. So, so we're going to do it differently, yeah. <laughs> Excuse me? We're going to do it differently. We may do it differently. <laughs> but, um, so, the only zones in all of the villages in Dutchess County that have more than 35 or occasionally 40 feet are in industrial districts. Really. So, you know, I went through and checked everything because there was a concern about that. And it's really unusual for a village to have any kind of 50 foot height allowance. So, that is what you need if you're going to have four stories. Many of the villages limit to two and a half stories. Uh, and almost all of them apart from the industrial zones, have a limit of 35 feet. Kingston is a city. Poughkeepsie is a city. They have higher limits. But it really changes the character of the community if you have four-story buildings in a community that maxes out at three stories. Uh, it really makes a big difference. And I, okay. I, I, it's my turn to go. Right. Um, and, and let me just finish by saying, Zero Place added 14 more units by having that fourth story. So, and th that's a really big difference for just 14 more apartments. Okay, I've, I've uh, so thought a lot about this. I've discussed this with many people. I totally appreciate the idea of, <coughs> of building up so we can preserve open space. Um, 
I go to lots of different places. I'm always taking pictures of, of the buildings. My kids are like, how come the pictures you have are buildings that make you mad and pictures of us? <laughs> <laughs> so I was in Maine this summer. There were, it was this charming, sweet little town that had four story buildings. All that being said, one of the things that I did before this NBR committee too is I tried to like pull really new Paul's who like understand planning and but who might not have like had a, a front row seat at, at any of the net zero conversations so I really wanted fresh perspectives and I, and I just said you know yeah first word out of your mouth three or four stories and most were three um, I'm very comfortable and supportive of this idea of, of three stories and 35 feet just as as you have it here In the village. I think it works with our village's community character and I get the the idea of density and open space, but if, if I'm gonna err on one side or the other, I'm gonna err on this this side. And sometimes That's that village to destroy is what breaks the camel's back or the community character. And it's like, okay, so we did this and what do we gain? Fourteen apartments. I, I got to push back on the community character. I think it's our community character to respond to climate change. And this is one of the ways that we have to respond to climate change is to build up. And I also, I love that 60, 70, 80 people came to that, but the social scientist in me has to remind everybody that's not a representative sample of the community. So um, it sounds like you have your three votes for um, three stories. If there's people that want to come to build board and say, hey, KT, I agree with you, four stories, come and tell us. Um, and I guess that's where we're at right now. Can I just add one thing? Kara. The, um, the argument that this somehow protects open space, I have a problem with because um, I, I appreciate the value of density and I understand the climate implications and I get all that. But um, unless you change the zoning in our more open spaces, creating more density does not automatically protect open spaces. Oh, yeah, there's absolutely but, but tons of places you have to intervene. But that's what everybody says that yeah. density protects open space. It doesn't happen that way. And there's so you have to make the open space zoning more restrictive? Yes. Like yes. you gotta do You have to actually do your zone redo you your zoning comprehensively if that's what you're trying to accomplish. I was sort of saying that when I said the rubber hits the road when you have actually projects, not just when you're where you're trying to be dense, right. but also where you're trying to protect the open and I'm, space. I'm not criticizing you, I'm just saying that this argument is stated very simplistically over and over and over. And it, it's just not the way it works. I think the other thing that you would, I would just point out is when we talk about uh, sprawl and housing development, part of it is housing choices. I mean, there are always certain people who are not, who are not single family homes. So you can't totally do away with the idea that we're going to continue to grow this way as well as grow up. But I don't know, I think it's that enough. No one will be able to afford single family homes in the future. <laughs> well, but you're not going to have your, you're not gonna be able to take your property tax off your federal tax. So, mm. Mm. so we, the, we had that discussion for tonight. Um, do we want to discuss that further or go on to the next one? The only point I would like to add to that is uh, at 2.5 people per apartment, 14 units is another 35 people and they need parking. And parking is you know, one of the other difficult issues. I mean, it sounds like you, Dennis, and Don are good with three, so we, should, if, if we don't the, need to talk about I'm it I'm good anymore. with the language in section 6-2. That's, that's all you need. Three, three votes for three stories. That's how it works. Well, I'm not good with all of the language in section 6-2. Do we want to talk about roof decks? Because that's in 6 2 as well. Yeah. Um, I'm not comfortable with the idea of not allowing roof decks. Um, to me, it feels like not allowing decks, not allowing people to use their side or backyards. I, I don't understand what's unique about roof decks and why you would not allow them. I think 
think we've discovered um, in the discussions around zero place that there are all kinds of issues with roof decks in terms of noise and light impacts in neighboring in neighboring houses or places, um, and also monitoring the use of those kind of roof decks is also problematic. I think we're going to see how that works out, um, you know, because trying to control, say, if somebody wants to have a party on the roof deck, how you monitor who gets to come to that party, um, how you deal with if they exceed the limitation, do you have to have a building manager there punching tickets to make sure that you don't exceed the capacity of the roof deck? Uh, I think that's... How is that different from a regular deck? What? How is that different from a regular deck? The, I think more of it, it's, it's the impacts of light and noise travel out and down. So, as, as we know, living down that area, like you can hear Asperger Park, anything that happens in Asperger Park at night, you hear because it, it's downhill towards our area. So, the, the, the raising of the roof deck makes noise and light travel farther than being above a regular on ground deck. It's just science. Um, also, you know. An applicant has to get a permit to build. It's a restaurant. You've got to get a permit to build a deck. And then you have to have parking and whatever, or however you're going to use that deck. Now you're just adding an entity on top of the building that really has no restrictions on it, I guess, is, is the concern. And then, as you said, how do you put conditions and how do you enforce those conditions? through a zoning it um, ordinance when you have a nuisance with the roof deck. So how, how, how would you enforce that? So we have a noise ordinance. Oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> I, I think that... Yeah, and it's hugely problematic, but we live in a college town, right? Yeah. Right, and that, that's the... And I think what we're doing... I, I, I just... I, 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 will, I, will, I, will, I would not support uh, not allowing. I don't know how the rest of it, maybe we can just go around and do a poll, but um, I don't I'm, I'm with you on that. I think there's a lot of hypotheticals that are getting thrown out that um, can be dealt with, and I think to just wipe it off as a possibility is something I can't support at this time. Well, I was going to speak, but I think Mayor Nyquist uh, ranks me. Can I, can I speak? <laughs> uh, I lived for 30 years with student houses around me. And the same thing was said, well, there's a noise, we worked at a noise ordinance when I was mayor. And we, it, we didn't find that we could successfully implement. So what ended up is that each individual homeowner had to call the police because of noise. And you call the police. You really don't, you get so sick and tired of calling the bloody police. And as soon as they're gone, the noise starts again. Mm -hmm. And uh, a roof deck. I moved out of the area that I lived in to get away from that. And now we're talking with Zero Place, which is, I know is not involved with this, but we're talking about a, a roof deck, a party place. 49 people can be out there. And who is to really enforce it? Am I going to have to call the police again and again because my property is next door to them? Now, I don't think it's fair to the, to the people that live around, me, around where a roof deck is or a party deck. I don't think it's backwards. Well, it's actually very different when it's in an apartment building versus a single family home because when it's a, when there's a building manager, you actually do have some Yes, but account. you can't. The building manager is only as good as, as who is hired. We have no control over what kind of a building manager is there. We have no control over who's going to own that place 10 years from now. The current manager can make all kinds of promises. But what about down the line? We also updated. And, uh, we and also, right, he's not going to have any students. But who's to say what will happen again 10 years down the line? We also updated the noise ordinance law recently. So I, nice. I, have, I have studied the noise ordinance over and over again when I was mayor. And the enforcement of a noise ordinance is extremely difficult under any circumstances. And I would just make one point. The, the one concern. 
concern that we have mostly with the NPL district is that it is a single parcel district. It is one parcel district. It is surrounded by residential parcels, by residential zones. So if it was a group of buildings together that all had roof decks, okay. But now you're talking about putting a row of multi-story buildings that are taller than any other building in the area and having roof decks on them adjacent to residential neighborhoods, single family residential neighborhoods. It's a historic district. Yeah. And but when you're looking at uh, multiple buildings potentially having roof decks, then you have the problem of where is the noise coming from because the roof decks could be visually shielded where you can't see where the people are, but you have three buildings and you know the noise is coming from one of them, and then you call the police and say, someone's making noise and I don't know who. But you can, we, we also have challenges in this community with backyard parties where we're not you know not allowing people to not have backyards either like you're going to have exactly the same issues and we have you know behind your house across the street from my house there are backyard parties with many 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 people you don't have to tell me it's and, impossible to see and, many times so i think by constructing higher quality buildings that offer amenities that that people want like at where an adult would want to live if they felt like they had outdoor space I, I think you're actually improving the quality of the housing offerings yeah the idea that